Hi guys, welcome back to my At Home With Morgan channel. Today we're doing a part one to my spring decorate and clean with me series. I have all of the DIYs in today's video. My version of spring decorating absolutely includes all of the green, all of the plants. My spring cleaning is getting those nasty places in your house taken care of that you tend to neglect over the year. And I have so many more things to share with you in today's video. So if you need all of the spring cleaning and decorating, then just stay tuned because I have got you covered. All right, so starting out in today's video, I am sharing some plants. Definitely my version of spring decorating is incorporating lots of plants into the house. I love using pothos. They're very hardy indoor house plants. Here I'm just tickling the roots, removing any extra soil, and I was putting them into some pots that I got from Hobby Lobby, and they were on sale last week, so I got a steal of a deal on them but these pots are unfortunately just a little bit too small for these pothos. I feel like they need just a hair bigger of a pot, but for the meantime, I'm going to keep them in here until I find some bigger, better pots from my local nursery. That's my go-to for plants and for pots, etc. So I had a gather sign in my kitchen and I just felt like it didn't go with my decor anymore. So I switched over to a floating shelf. Now this is a two by 10. I cut down to 48 inches, stained to match the rest of the wood in the house. And then I used these shelf brackets that I picked up from Menards and these were only $4.97 each. It was about half the price of the same shelf brackets from Home Depot. So if you guys have a Menards and you like these shelf brackets, I highly recommend that you get them from there because they were so much cheaper. But here to secure the shelf onto the wall, I, I just marked out where the hole were and then put some anchors into the wall, drywall anchors, because I wasn't going directly into studs and I wanted to make sure that this shelf was secure. So I got those molly screws in, drywall anchors in, and then I put the shelf up with some screws and boom, it was done. I plan to add more plants to this shelf throughout the months, but for now I'm going to start out with some pothos. I have some baby aloe I added on there and you'll see that I'm going to put up a sign here to our letter board. Uh, the saying has absolutely no meaning. I was just messing around with the letters that I had sitting on the counter and turn dude is what I came up with and I thought it was funny because it made zero sense so I just left it so now I get all these questions like what is the meaning behind your sign and honestly there's no meaning behind it I was just being a weirdo and decided to add some lettering to it but yes I'm feeling like this shelf definitely adds so much more of a boho feel to the house and gives that bright and airy spring look I'm loving it so much and I can't wait to decorate it for every season and having some fun on top of the cabinets as well. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this little DIY tutorial for this floating shelf. It was so cheap and it was so easy and it added a ton of character above my kitchen window. All right, so in this part of the video, I am starting a part one to my oven cleaning. Now, what I like to do first is vacuum out all of the ick out of the bottom of the oven. I do have a self-cleaning and steam cleaning oven, so what I like to do after I'm done vacuuming it is get that steam clean going. It's just a 30-minute cycle, and I pour one cup into the bottom. Make sure that if you do have a self-cleaning or a steam cleaning oven, you follow the instructions on the bottom. So while I'm letting that oven steam clean, I'm cleaning the tops of the cabinets which I'm going to be very brutally honest with you guys. I have not cleaned the tops of my cabinets since we moved in and they were disgusting, just absolutely disgusting. It wasn't just like dust. It was also this like greasy grime on top. It was so 
so bad. So I vacuumed it off. That's why I swear by this little Dyson vacuum because I'm able to do like handheld things like this, super easy. And then I cleaned it off with an all purpose cleaner by Method. I use the lime and sea salt because it just smells so fresh and is perfect for springtime and summer. It's my favorite spring and summer cleaning scent. So that is what I'm doing here is cleaning off the tops of the cabinets and getting all of that grease and grime off. I don't know why it's so satisfying to watch disgusting places like this get cleaned, but the befores and afters just, oh, it's so gross, but it makes me so happy at the same time. So enjoy the gross befores and afters. This is like real mom life, just something that gets put to the back of my list every time I'm cleaning. And like I said, three years of just grossness and buildup. I will definitely be including this in my springtime cleaning from now on to avoid any of this getting built up again. Oh my gosh, it was so disgusting, yet satisfying to clean. After the oven is done with its steam clean, I decided to go ahead and do the full oven cleaning cycle, which is four hours. So that is the part one to my oven cleaning. Now, something else that I like to do during the spring is to vacuum out my vents. My kids just shove stuff down there all the time. Dirt and grossness gets down there, so I vacuumed that out. All right, so here I am cleaning out the tracks. I like to clean out my window tracks at least twice a year. Definitely something I do in the spring and in the fall. Now it just builds up gunk. I have no idea where this comes from. Our sliding glass door doesn't even open, so it's just dirt and dust that gets built up over the vents. It's so gross, but I use Mr. Clean Concentrate with a scrub brush and plenty of paper towels to clean out those tracks and it comes out clean every single time. I love the scrub brush hack. If you guys have any cleaning tips or hacks, leave them down below. I love to hear new methods for cleaning all the time, hence why I like to make these cleaning videos, because I like to share my cleaning tips and tricks with you guys, and vice versa for you guys to share with me. So leave it in the comments below if you have any tips or tricks or hacks. After I'm done cleaning my tracks and like getting all of the grime around the sliding glass door itself, then I like to clean the windows. And I do the same thing with the windows in my living room and I like to use this foaming glass cleaner and I get it from Sam's Club. I love it, it foams up so nicely and the windows get clean every single time, streak free, I swear by this stuff. Die for you. 
you One of us, one of us Gotta say the obvious Nobody loves me better yet I get too drunk and too scared And lie to you If only you knew I would die for you One of us, one of us Gotta say the obvious Nobody loves me better now for some Easter decorating, I am doing just a little bit in today's video. I picked up these paper mache eggs from Hobby Lobby. They were really cheap and it was such a fun activity. I'm not super into the really bright pastel tones for Easter, so I wanted to make something up for myself and I did this really light blush pink and this tan color, almost the same color as the paper mache eggs themselves. And I love how they turned out. They're just beautiful muted tones and I plan to share more muted toned Easter decorations in my next video and like an Easter tree and things like that. I like to do a little bit of Easter stuff for the kids. They love Easter and they love all of the traditions around it. This would definitely be a great replacement for dyeing Easter eggs. If you're not super crazy about dyeing Easter eggs, I've seen people just paint Easter eggs instead. We still do dye Easter eggs because the kids love it so much. It is a mess, but we love to do it every single year and they tend to like doing the like glitter ones and the marbled ones super fun we usually do it the weekend before Easter and usually use the boiled eggs as well but I've also seen people like blow out the egg out of the shell itself so I might try that this year to see if we can use the eggs in like a scramble and then the like shells themselves can sit out for a little bit what do you guys do I'm interested to see what other people do for their Easter egg traditions because sometimes I feel like if you just boil the eggs, they're such a waste. I don't know, I just like, it's it's like a weird thought process that I have. I'm like, I don't wanna waste these eggs, but also like Easter egg dyeing is tradition, so, and the kids love it so much. So anyways, let me know in the comments below what you guys do with your Easter eggs. So the next little hack that I have for you guys is in regards to like the microwave vents. 
I like to spray them down with Dawn Power Wash and I'll let them sit there and soak for a while. I make sure I spray both sides. I set them on the counter while I do the dishes. And then when I rinse them off, you guys can see that gross brown stuff coming off. That actually gets rid of most of the grease. And then I put them in the dishwasher. It's really that easy. You don't need to sit there and scrub them. If yours are worse than mine, just toss them directly into the dishwasher. It gets them sparkly clean every single time. And then you can just put them right back. Now my kitchen window is one of the windows that gets the dirtiest in my house, just from splatters and things like that. So I am cleaning that up and getting the windowsill all cleaned up. I also like to keep my plants here over the winter time. I have to be careful because this window can get drafty. So that can make for a plant death if I'm not too careful, but it does get great indirect sunlight. All of my windows get great indirect sunlight because of the way of the houses next to us. They block that direct sunlight. So like I said, my house is just made to be a jungle. I love it so much. What are your guys' most favorite spring decorations? Are you into spring decorating? I It took me a while to get into spring decorating just because I'm not a huge fan of like the really bright pastel colors but I've kind of found my own style over the years incorporating plants and like lemons and limes and just really bright fun colors and I tend to keep that throughout the summer months as well and I really like to do wreaths for every single season and I plan to share a DIY here on my channel on how to make your own wreaths for super cheap at home and make them that like rustic chic boho feel so stay tuned because I will share my summer and springtime wreaths with you here on my channel but so I like to dust at least once a week but definitely something you need to do during the spring cleaning season I feel like everything gets just so dusty over the winter time we spend a lot of time indoors and that dust builds up so I'm using my Dyson again for dusting. It's so easy and I like to use the attachment that has like the bristles because it really gets in there. These are like raw wood slabs so there are grooves and edges in there and I feel like the Dyson just picks up the dust a lot more and I like to get way underneath that shelf as well and making sure that I'm getting all the way to the back. This is somewhere where dirt and toys and pencils tend to get built up and like stuck to the back of the wall and same with under the couches, this is disgusting. I had fed Riker some chicken nuggets and ketchup for lunch earlier this day. And as you can see, it's splattered all over the floor and there are crumbs. That's why this couch gets so dirty underneath with crumbs and nastiness is because it's right by our dining room table and all of the leftover food gets pushed under the couch. It's so gross. I need to make a better habit of cleaning underneath here, but this is real life. This is real mom life, like toys and empty lunchable containers and balls and like chicken nuggets just like all the things, getting kicked underneath the couch, dog toys, you name it. Everything rolls underneath this couch. So this is also a couch that's really hard for me to move. So I like to use my Dyson so that I can reach all the way underneath and get it all clean. Now this is the aftermath. This is the pile of junk that I found from probably six months worth of buildup. It's so gross, I know, but I just felt like I had to share it because it's real life. Reminder to clean underneath those couches more often. Reminder for myself, most definitely. In my next video, I will be sharing like underneath the beds and behind the dressers, those other areas that just tend to be neglected because let's be real, it is hard enough to keep up with the day-to-day -day normal cleaning and doing this deep cleaning just gets pushed to the back of the list because it takes so much time to keep a tidy house on the day-to-day -day. when it comes to this deep cleaning stuff. It's like, I don't even have time to do it, but I have to make time to do it. It's so silly because it takes what, like 10, 20 minutes to really deep clean some of those areas. So maybe adding some of those deep clean areas to your list throughout the year it would really help as well but if not you got your spring cleaning time set a weekend aside during the spring when it's still kind of chilly outside and get those things done while the kids are napping throw your ear pods in and just jam out that is my suggestion music always helps to motivate me and get me going along with a cup of coffee
my goodness. Okay, so does anybody else's toy area look like this? Unfortunately, our toy area is our living room. We have a 2,000 square foot house. I'd love to have a playroom. But to combat this, we do plan to set up some built-ins on either side of this media wall. We do also plan to do a fireplace in the middle very soon. So stay tuned because I will be sharing that transformation here on my channel with you guys. But built-ins are definitely going to help hide the toys. Now, my kids are definitely like dump and play. We're working on it, but my kids are ages two and five. So sometimes the concept of organization just isn't there in that okay but my kids tend to play with their toys more if I keep them organized and they know where to find them so I have these cheap Sterilite bins that I got from Target for $1.99 each and I separate them out into Legos slash Polly Pockets like the smaller Polly Pockets animals cars and food my cars and my food bins are getting very full honestly the animal one is too I plan to upgrade these to baskets when we get the built-ins put in and hopefully that will give it a little bit more room for those toys. I do like to go through them in the springtime. I do this several times a year. I'd say honestly probably every few months I go through the kids' toys. I throw away the broken ones. They're constantly getting new toys between birthdays and like Christmas and Easter and all of the things. Honestly if I could just swap out toys for experiences I most definitely would. I'm one of those moms that I would much rather take my kids to Disney World and give them travel experiences etc instead of toys because they already have so many toys but that's been difficult this past year with the pandemic and traveling has been really limited so they've just gotten a lot of toys to be honest with you organizing them out really helps and my kids are able to find their toys and they tend to play with them more now if they are not organized if they're just in a mess like this they will ignore them and they will find pots and pans and all of the other things to play with besides their toys so i'm doing a really good deep clean all the toys i found from under the couch and throughout the house i'm going through and placing them in their like right places i do have that three-tiered stair light bin too i know it's not the prettiest to look at and I am jamming in this clip as well. You'll see me singing a little bit. I'm just jamming out to some country music. And then I also have some like good like EDM jams. I'm like all over the place with my music and my cleaning. It's it's funny to like watch back. But anyway, my Sterilite bin, the three-tiered bin, I like to put Barbies and some of the bigger toys that just don't fit into those four smaller ones. I like to put in there. Typically the cars, food and animals and Lego slash Polly Pockets all fit into the smaller bins. And then I do have a dino bin and I do have a Lego Duplo bin. Now, I did recently take all of the toys out of the kids' room because I transitioned Riker from a crib to a big boy bed and to eliminate any kind of like messing around during nap time and bedtime, I had to take the books out and the toys out. He was destroying the books. It just was not working having the toys and the books in their room, trying to make their room for sleep only. So that is why I have so many toys down here. I know it's temporary and eventually these toys are gonna be gone and it's gonna make me super sad. It makes me really sad thinking about it right now that my kids are in this like super precious stage. Even if it comes with all of the messes and all of the toys, this stage is so short lived and I'm just trying to enjoy every minute of it even if my living room is a mess all the time but this is what I like to do, especially during my, my spring cleaning, is I like to sort out the toys thoroughly and throw away the things that are broken, the books that are torn. Keep a garbage bin close by so that it is easy for me to do this, and I like to do it during nap time so that they don't see me throwing away the broken toys. So I'm going to let you guys enjoy the cleaning and the organizing in this part of the video, and I will pop back in in just a minute.
you get too close I lose my way and I freeze I wish you knew So it's really funny, I get a lot of comments on my dog. I actually have two dogs, I've mentioned this before, but my mini Aussie, Aspen, is always in my face when I'm cleaning. She is just, she's either like super sassy and just hanging out on the couch and then I can clean, or she's in the mood to just be in my face. If I get down on her level, she's like, oh my gosh, here you are on my level. You're obviously here to give me attention. So that's why you don't see Aspen in a lot of my cleaning videos. You'll see her more so in my personal vlogs. But Coda, my border collie, he just turned eight years old a couple weeks ago. And he is my buddy when I'm cleaning. I can barely get him to move. He's always right by my side, but he's able to stay out with me when I clean because he's not quite so in my face and trying to chase the vacuum, etc. I get a lot of comments on Coda always being in my videos, always being by my side. He is so cute. I just, he's my buddy. He's my little buddy. So getting into cleaning the floors. Okay, so I just picked up a new hack. So I have stopped cleaning my floors with Bona, Bana, or however you pronounce it, the Squirt and Mop by Method. I used to use these all the time, but I had a really greasy film building up. So I started to use the hack of Powder Tide, which is one teaspoon of Powder Tide. And then I do a third cup of bleach and a gallon of hot, hot, water. Now it takes a couple of times to really strip the floors down, but floors have honestly never been more clean and they're so nice and shiny. So I highly recommend that you guys try that out and you want to mop your floors with an almost dry mop. So give that a shot. Let me know how it goes. I swear by this method. But that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this spring clean and decorate with me. This is a part one to my spring cleaning series and I also have some germ busting videos coming out for you guys. So stay tuned. If you guys are new here, I would love if you considered subscribing to my channel. I do all of the cleaning and organizing and home decor motivation here on my At Home With Morgan channel. And I do have my mommy channel where I share vlogs and things like that over on my personal channel and I'll leave that link down below for you as well. But I will see you guys on Thursday for another really fun video. Okay, bye you guys.